The temporomandibular joints, or TMJs, are anterior to the ear. They are ganglio-arthroidal joints, which permit both rotational and sliding movement. The temporomandibular joints, which are on each side of the lower jaw, join the mandible to the viscero cranium and allow the mouth to open and close. Common causes of TMJ dislocation are extreme opening of the mouth, as may occur when yawning, or during prolonged dental treatment or intubation, or as a result of trauma due to a conflict or accident. Patients with acute TMJ dislocation usually present to the emergency department, but may present to general medical or dental practices. Patients with bilateral TMJ dislocation have malocclusion, an open bite, and empty articular sockets. The empty sockets can be palpated as pretracheal hollowing. In cases of unilateral dislocation, the chin is shifted to the contralateral side. Dislocation occurs when the mouth is wide open and the condyle moves onto the articular eminence and slips forward, preventing the mouth from closing. The masticatory muscles tighten and hold the mandible in this new, aberrant position, which causes the muscles to contract further and lock the mandible in this painful position. The primary contraindication to the correction of TMJ dislocation is the presence of facial fractures. If you suspect that a patient has facial fractures, obtain radiographic images of the affected area and do not attempt to reposition the mandible. This video will demonstrate a simple technique for TMJ reduction. Other techniques include the classic so-called Hippocrates method, the wrist pivot reduction, and the use of an interdental object or block in order to lift the condyle back into place and are not discussed further in this video. You will need only basic equipment to perform the procedure. A chair with head support, protective glasses, a face mask, non-sterile examination gloves, and gauze pads which can be wrapped around your thumb for protection during the procedure. Seat the patient on a chair that provides head support. Put on your glasses, face mask, examination gloves, and, if necessary, Wrap a gauze pad around your thumb to shield it from the sharp cusps of the patient's teeth. The procedure does not usually require the use of muscle relaxants, sedatives, or general anesthetic agents, but these agents should be considered for patients who have severe pain or who are unable to follow instructions when you reposition the mandible, for instance patients with cognitive dysfunction. Reposition the mandible one side at a time. Fix the patient's head between your body and your non-dominant hand. Place the thumb of your dominant hand in the retromolar area of the side of the jaw to be repositioned and grip the mandible with the rest of your hand. This pose will allow you to verify the position of the condyle, which will serve as a reference point as you reposition the mandible. Apply gentle but increasing downward pressure. Gradually increase this force, sometimes for up to five minutes, until you feel the condyle move, then push dorsally very slightly until you feel the condyle slide into the glenoid fossa. This dorsal movement is generally automatic since the articular tissue retracts once the articular eminence has been surpassed. After you reduce one TMJ, hold it in position with your non-dominant hand by positioning a finger in front of the condyle. Then reposition the other TMJ in the manner just described. Verify normal occlusion once you have repositioned the entire jaw. Complications are uncommon in this procedure. The most frequent problem is the inability to reduce the dislocation. If the first attempt at reduction is unsuccessful, consider administering a mild sedative, such as diazepam, to relax the masticatory muscles. Another potential complication is a subcondylar fracture which may occur if too much force is applied in a posterior direction during repositioning. The primary force should always be downwards. Because early repeat dislocation is a clinically significant risk, it is important to instruct the patient in preventive aftercare. Instruct the patient that for the next two months, he or she should not exceed the intraincisal distance of one finger's width when opening the mouth. Also for the next two months, 
the patient should support his or her chin with a fist when yawning. In patients who have had repeated dislocation, you may want to consider the use of a fixation bandage after the procedure. It can be kept in place for 24 hours or as appropriate. TMJ dislocation is easily diagnosed. If there are no facial fractures, perform TMJ repositioning as soon as possible to avoid unnecessary discomfort for the patient. After the jaw has been repositioned, patients generally do well, provided that they follow the instructions for aftercare.